So somebody who is disrespectful, who doesn't believe you're having those symptoms, who thinks that you're imagining things, mm -mm, you can't be my doctor. But it was a comment from someone who had endometriosis and she had started with symptoms as a teenager. And when, because there was somebody else in the family who had the same thing. So they asked them to go to the doctor. But when she went to the doctor with her mom, the doctor said, nah, it's impossible. It can't be, you're too young. So don't sell. My mother used to say, if something doesn't sit right, it probably isn't right. Hey, welcome. My name is Dr. Sylvia. I'm a general practitioner based in the United Kingdom. This is Ask Away Health with Dr. Sylvia. Today, we're having a little bit of a chit chat video, so no particular structure to it. I hope it's not going to be too long, but I really wanted us to have a discussion about how women, how you can advocate for your health in 2024 and beyond. So I've got a few notes and I'm going to refer to, and I'm going to be referring to them from time to time, but really it's just for us to have a discussion. I really hope that if you come across this video and watch it i hope that you'll be able to or you'd feel free to share your experience both positive and negative in terms of getting through to health practitioners about your health concerns getting them to listen to you getting a diagnosis getting treated and so on and that's what we're really going to be talking about now why is this important all of a sudden well it's not just now that it's important it's always been important but remember we're just coming out from endometriosis awareness month which was march 2024 just a few days ago and one of the i think very profound pieces of information i came across was an article from endometriosis uk because they had carried out a study looking at different women's experience with their diagnosis of endometriosis so i'm going to refer to that let's just have a look at it here um so this is a study so it's an article on the endometriosis uk website called years of being dismissed ignored and belittled endometriosis uk urges improvement to deteriorating diagnosis times and if you watched one of my recent live streams i talked about how um, a woman with endometriosis had it, it taken her several years before she was able to get a diagnosis and by the time she was diagnosed um, she had stage four endometriosis she had to go through four different types of surgery um, to address fertility issues in particular um, on average at the moment women are looking at seven to eight years or more to get a diagnosis of endometriosis and because of the very real issues that we have with systemic racism in the united kingdom in the united states and the other parts of the world it can take even longer for a black woman to get a diagnosis so it's I'm particularly concerned and i want us to have a conversation about what we can do to advocate for our health so these are some of women's experiences and the range of comments that they made in this survey carried out um that's reported on endometriosis uk for example i was constantly dismissed ignored and belittled by medical professionals telling me that my symptoms were simply due to stress and tiredness i persevered for over 10 years desperate for help somebody else says when i first went to the gp as a teenager i was told i was being dramatic and would get used to the period pain i was having another comment any nurses told me that everyone has period pain so take paracetamol and go home and the last one that they've referenced here says the first gynecologist i was referred to was exceptionally dismissive he denied my experience and told me i was probably not in that much pain and just having normal periods and i think these are just appalling examples of how women are underserved poorly treated and really abused when it comes to health seeking there's so many different factors involved here a lot is how the system is set up um, there is some responsibility for us healthcare practitioners to be more aware for our knowledge to improve in terms of recognizing symptoms and not just that actually in simply dealing with people's concerns and not disregarding them being able to listen to somebody and understand their concerns understand the depth of their 
concerns and take that forward in terms of helping them to reach a place of treatment where they feel better, where they feel uh, that their life has improved and they're not burdened by illness. So there's a lot to do in that regard. Uh, but I think there's also more to it. And I, I, I think that given the really bad place it is where women are having to wait seven, eight years, even if you're having to wait one or two years to get a diagnosis, we can do a lot better. And so while it is good to look at education, awareness for health practitioners, while it's good at, for government to look at how to improve waiting times and so on, I also want to look at how women, us, can empower ourselves, how we can ad advocate and even push to get our voices heard because I think that a lot of the time um, we have been brought up and there has always been a culture of the doctor knows best or the health practitioner knows best and while we are trained in a particular area or while we're trained to deliver medical care we are not the master of your own bodies you are and i strongly believe in listening to my patient and listening to what their cons uh, concerns are to help to drive us forward along with the medical information and knowledge that i bring into the equation so let's talk about how we can advocate for health in 2024 the first one on my list is to understand your body what do I mean by that? It's simply just being able to recognize what is normal and what is not. And sometimes it, it can take some time. It can take listening to other people. It can take listening to health professionals, but it, it means understanding your body. Let's take an example of menstrual cycle or menstrual periods. And uh, one of the things I learned quite early on myself was keeping track of my periods and just learning to make notes of symptoms or th things that I was concerned about if and when they happened because I found that writing them down helps in terms of just keeping track you remember when it happened what context it was happening in what was this situation what kind of stress was that were you going through and so understanding your body means that you are aware of how your breasts feel because you do regular breast examinations every month you are aware of how your periods are regular you are aware if you have a 28 day cycle or if you have a 35 day cycle something in between or something longer so if you keep track you can do that using a simple calendar a diary using apps that are very popular now but you're keeping track of this information so that if something happens that is not within your usual pattern you can bring it to the attention of your healthcare providers quickly and you can use that as a basis for there's something not right here this is my usual and so we need to look at it i think that's the very first bit which is understand your body also schedule regular checkups with your um, doctors your general practitioners or your specialist gynecologists as needed and um, i think it's important especially as we're growing older women going past the age of 20s um, in the uk we start cervical screening from the age of 25 so you start to get your regular invitation from the age of 25 making sure that you don't miss those appointments because they're important to quickly or to identify early any changes that might be associated with cervical cancer uh, but it's not just cervical screening um, it's also things like i've just mentioned making sure you're examining your breasts regularly and if you feel something is not normal or you feel something seems out of the ordinary come and sit down with your doctor and have a chat about it um, older women there are well women checks for example after the age of 40 you can go in and have a chat with the healthcare providers have some blood tests so we're looking at things like your blood pressure looking at things like the weight cholesterol level and all these things which that's an important time to begin to keep track of them because you want to make sure the risks of disease like um, heart problems diabetes and so on are reduced and the other thing is if you have a family history of certain conditions then you might want to sort of get in touch with your doctor early be able to discuss what things should i be looking out for what things should i be concerned about because we've got this family history in my family so that's number one understand your body number two get health education and i add this proviso from reputable sources like us so by this i mean educate yourself about your health needs your family's health needs what reproductive health mental health preventive health care have be on a newsletter subscription where you get regular updates about health related information and just take a couple of minutes to read through certain things 
it may not be directly related to you but it just you're just building your arsenal of information you're re learning from reputable health sources and i do recommend the ask away health email newsletter which i will put the link in the description box below so you can subscribe to that because we do share regular updates on different health conditions particularly pertaining to women's health but we also touch on things relating to sexual health children's health children's health and so on but the key thing is that you're providing yourself with education um, that is valid that is research-based and which hopefully will put you in a better standing to recognize things earlier when if or when they happen being knowledgeable allows you to make informed decisions and you can advocate more effectively for others and yourself the third point is ask questions yeah you probably guess that there's a reason why this channel is called ask away health because I'm all about asking questions I don't mind if you have questions to ask about whatever condition the only challenge I have is the time and do you know this is why this channel started because I wanted to address the questions that I was getting from my patients and we didn't have enough time to answer everything but back to the subject ask questions please feel free to communicate openly and honestly with your healthcare provider about your concerns any symptoms or changes in your health don't hesitate to ask questions don't think that we will think you're being silly or foolish no 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 because part of our role as health providers is also education and it's one of the roles i love best actually about my job as a general practitioner i've been able to provide education for what I've learned, whether from school or from experience in speaking to people, research and so on. Please feel free to ask questions because then you hear answers that you might be, okay, that makes sense or that you might query. You can ask questions from different sources so that when you're making a decision, it's one that is well informed. The fourth point that I think is really important when it comes to advocating for ourselves is listen to your inner self. My mother used to say, if something doesn't sit right, it probably isn't right. So please trust your instincts and speak up. Even if you've had the nudging to say it in the surgery and you didn't feel comfortable enough to do so, and you get back home, pick up the phone and try again or book another appointment. Trust your inner person. It's better to listen to that voice and take it in that direction and then be proven that it wasn't right. It's actually better to test it than not. I think more often than not, you're in a better place having checked whether that nudging you had inside of you was was real or not. And probably, and I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section, probably many of us, many of us will say that when we went ahead and listened to that inner voice nudging us to take some particular action, it turned out being right more often than wrong. But the bottom line is if you have any concerns, some niggly worries inside of you, please open up, address them and let us explore them together. The next one is keep symptom diaries. Now I know I talked about tracking you know your periods and you know uh, just be understanding your body earlier and this is related this is specifically about symptoms so after the second third week of a rush that's not getting better or actually seems to be spreading um this is the time to start to talk to somebody about it but also to start to keep a diary of when what makes it worse is it worse in cold water is it worse um or do you notice it you break out more when you use this particular type of wash powder is it this particular type of fragrance or situation that flares it up i'm just sort of throwing out rough examples but the point i'm trying to make is that if there's a symptom that you're concerned about um, and it's something that you want to talk about with your doctor please start to keep a symptom diary that explains what's going on um, ideally when you get to see your doctor we will ask you questions trying to understand the pattern of the symptoms we will do that and of course it's a lot easier for you to be able to provide that information if you're already keeping a symptom diary for a, maybe a week or two before your appointment so please let's get into the habit of keeping symptom diaries the next point i think is really important and is related to medical knowledge is know your rights know your rights as a patient and we are all patients even your health practitioner even your gp or your gynecologist might develop a problem that takes them to see another health practitioner so it's important that we all know our rights as patients for example the right to informed consent so when you're going for an operation that you told what the operation is about what it's supposed to entail the potential um 
side effects or complications from the procedure. You're given all that information so that your decision to go ahead with that procedure is based on the information that you've provided. So that's informed consent. You agree because you know that there could be these risks, but we're going to minimize them. However, you are aware of those risks when you put your signature down to, um, to consent for surgery. So that's just an example. You have a right to being provided the wealth of information before you have that procedure. You also have a right to confidentiality. You have a right to respectful treatment. Remember these comments that we looked at just now? Um, when I went to, when I first went to the GP, as in another one, the first gynecologist I was referred to was exceptionally dismissive. That's totally disrespectful. And patients are they have a right we have a right to be treated respectfully even when we come to healthcare providers looking for advice or looking for guidance for treatment so it's useful to familiarize yourself with healthcare laws regulations where you live that protect patients rights i will say this very clearly to all women all my sisters out there don't accept anyone disregarding you disregarding your symptoms or the experience that you're having that's disrespectful and if that person behaves that way that tells me i need to find another doctor i need to get a second opinion you cannot be my doctor you cannot disrespect me and be my doctor your doctor is your advocate is on your side your doctor may not be going through the same thing that you are but they will understand they'll empathize they will imagine how it would feel to be in your shoes not just with the pain or bleeding problem or whatever but when you get back home how is this affecting your family how is this affecting your sex life how is this affecting looking after your kids how is this affecting sleep how is it affecting work someone who understands that so somebody who is disrespectful who doesn't believe you're having those symptoms who thinks that you're imagining things mm -mm. You can't be my doctor. So the next one is, please don't accept that form of ageism that we sometimes use in medicine. For example, you're too young to have this condition. Let me explain. It's true that certain conditions likely to happen at certain ages. In fact, knowing this actually could help to narrow down some diagnosis. So that's, that's a valid point. But illness, ill health is not about absolutes. And it's important for us um, healthcare providers to be able to think outside the box. And when a particular condition is not improving and when it seems that something is going on in someone at an age where we don't expect it to happen, we can't dismiss it. We can't just say, oh, you know, this is impossible. You can't get fibroids at the age of 14 or 16. It's extremely rare, but it has happened. So that's just an example. Um, and that's one of the things I was talking about, being understanding and just trying to think outside the box and not just allowing certain rules to limit our understanding. So I, I'm referring particularly to somebody who says, oh, you're too young to have this, um, or a doctor who comes who says, nah, you're unlikely to have this. I think there was a comment that referred to that. Well, when I first went to the GP as a teenager, I was told I was being dramatic and would get used to the period pain I was having. I mean, this is not exactly the point, but I remember a comment if I find it I'll put it up on the screen but it was a comment from someone who had endometriosis and she had started with symptoms as a teenager and when because there was somebody else in the family who had the same thing so they asked them to go to the doctor but when she went to the doctor with her mom the doctor said nah it's impossible it can't be you're too young so don't accept that you know this is the time hearing that when you hear those kind of ideas it's good to seek a second opinion please don't rest on the opinion of just one person i think the beauty of medicine for many of us is that you can ask somebody else what do they think and um, for example we have an email health information service where we can provide you with certain um certain direction or certain knowledge or information about specific medical conditions which can be a second opinion that you can use to go back to your physician or you can use to go back to um, another hospital to say I think this is a problem I'm having and um, can I have this test and so on you can have that conversation in some cases and I know it can be difficult because issues with cost issues with access but for those of us who can actually access somebody else to look at your symptoms from a very fresh point of view very different set of eyes that can be very useful and I would encourage it and the other thing I would say very useful in terms of advocating for ourselves is community support get support from other women 
get support from other people going through similar symptoms. Support groups, online forums, your family, friends. It's important because sharing knowledge, sharing experiences can empower women to advocate better collectively for all of us. And I encourage it. I think it's good to speak to someone that you trust about what you're feeling they can possibly provide point you in the right direction be careful of who you're speaking to and um, because again we talked about getting health information from reputable sources some of us have grown up with ideas that are not right about healthcare, so please bounce ideas off you can talk to friends and family about something if you trust them and you can have that discussion with them but also seek information from other verified reputable sources i would encourage and and the last point I've got today, and it's by no means exhaustive, there are different things I think that you would encounter in your healthcare journey that you might experience that would help you to push and advocate more for your own health. And it may be your daughter's health or your father's health or your friend's health. So it's not just about us. It's also about those around us and the wider community. But another thing I think it's really important is keep a record. I know that by now you will know that I love tracking things. So I've said track your periods. <laughs> track your symptoms keep a record of your doctor's visits and conversations and plans i can't tell you how many times um i've sat with somebody and we're talking about you know a condition that's been going on and on for some time and they say well i saw the doctor seven eight months ago and blah 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 we agreed to do this and then okay so what next what happened next and sometimes it can be difficult because you're not able to go back or not able to get another appointment there are other practical issues involved but the point i'm trying to make here is when you have a visit with your doctor for a condition that's chronic there needs to be some kind of treatment plan or schedule if it's the first visit and they've done an examination and they've done you know the standard things and they say well should we try some painkillers and see how this goes okay fair enough fair enough depending on the circumstance but how long are you going to do that for when is it the time to say this is not working we need to revisit that we need to have that conversation and you need to have it written down in your notes so that you go back to it because if somebody says to you for example somebody with um, acid reflux you know and we've had a visit and nothing on examination and we say let's try some tablets to see if this settles down i want you to come back after two weeks or three weeks um, so that we can review things and you need to go back after three weeks or four weeks whatever to review especially if it's no better because then the doctor can decide we need to do something else we need to do a this test we need to refer you to do a camera test for example so the point i'm trying to make with it and which many of us doctors do but just in case you find that there is it seems to be open-ended it seems to be you know what was the plan you know if you have a chronic condition um what are we waiting for what are we trying you on painkillers for a short while to see if that makes a difference before we then admit you sorry before we then refer you to another unit because painkillers haven't worked uh, i don't think it's acceptable to just say well okay go and try this pain medicine and you continue to live in pain for months and months on end and there's no review and i think that's really um that's not good practice that's not good medicine so if you found that you're in that situation where there is a condition that you have you saw your doctor some weeks or months ago and you're not sure what the next step should be please please get back in touch with them it's not getting better or it's getting worse or so so and so has happened what's the next step what should we be doing when should i start to feel better when is it time for me to have a scan or you know these kind of questions guys thank you so much for listening let me know what your thoughts are. i know we've sort of rambled around this thing and i'm sorry that it's a bit longer than usual but i thought it was a really worthwhile conversation but i want to hear from you what things that you've had to do or what you've done to advocate for your health or somebody in your family especially as it pertains to women's issues like endometriosis or fibroids or adenomyosis or pcos and something and so on let's have that conversation it is part of sharing our experience it's part of building our support our community and um, helping us know better and please don't forget if you have any questions that are specific to any condition you can use my email health information service i would love to hear from you just to provide you some guidance signpost to provide some extra education that will help you to make the right decisions about your life if you've enjoyed watching this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to share it with a friend and of course subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.